Welcome back. Here we are. Uh, second half here. We are going to uh, get going with our disc golf segment. We're going to start it off with our interview. We have an interview with uh, Nicholas Duran. He is a five-time junior PDGA world champion sponsored by Nova Discs. Um, he's a young, upcoming player. Um, obviously, he has some credentials to back that up. And I mean, he's got 17 career wins. I'm looking forward to uh, getting to talk with him yeah, and see really what. Nice to hear his perspective on. Yeah, this. see what he thinks. So um, let's give him a call and see what see what he has to say. Hey, hey. Yo, Nick, how's it going, man? Doing good. How about you guys? Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight, man. Thank you for having me. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, well, let's, uh, let, let's get into this. You, uh, you've won wor Junior Worlds five times. Um, how, how old were you when you started playing? And like, when did you get sponsored by Anova? How old are you now, even? Um, I'm 17 right now. Uh, I started playing when I was about four years old, and I won my very first world championship at the age of seven. I believe it was seven, or just turned eight. Wow, seven years old, you won your first Worlds. That is, that's incredible. Um, when did Innova pick you up then? Uh, they actually picked me up a few short months after I won Worlds for the very first time. Oh, man. They saw it. They saw yeah, that's that's incredible. Um, which since you have five under your belt, which one has been the the most like sweet? I guess. Um, I think the one out in Emporia, Kansas, when I was sixteen. Uh, yeah, sixteen at that time, and I was having a really slow year, and then Worlds came up, and I knew it was coming, and I just I started setting my mindset on that one, and I ended up taking that one down by nine. In that sixteen hundred division, you won by nine strokes. Yeah. Oh wow! And was that your uh, was that your fifth title then? That was my fifth title right there. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, how how long do you plan on staying in the amateur division before uh, you actually, completely switch to pro? This is my first like full year accepting money. So I played one tournament this year, and I took that one down, and I accepted my very first. Full year of uh, professional. I took cash last year at the end of last year in October, I believe, and just kind of didn't have. That was like the end of my season. So this is my first full season being a pro. Wow, that's awesome. So this is your. Uh, so you're looking to maybe take down rookie of the year. It would be very cool, but I'm not really focused on that one this year, just because I'm still finishing high school. It's my senior year. Yeah. A few short months left, so. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you think transitioning into your professional career that those early big tournament wins at things like the Worlds is going to give you a slight edge compared to other young pros coming up? Um, I feel like it just gives me like another thing to be confident about, like going out on the course and knowing who I am and what I've done. That I can, I can compete to that level all the time and knowing that it's always there. Awesome. Yeah, that, that is true. Knowing that you've been there and uh, can do it definitely helps your, uh, your mental game a lot. Uh, what, what big plans or tournaments do you have planned that you, are like majors and NTs a priority since this is your first year or are you just kind of sticking around home? Um, for this year, just because, like I said, I'm finishing high school. Until I'm out fully of high school and just graduated and get it done with, uh, Nothing really, just local states, maybe a couple here and there out of state. But um, the most, like the one that, I, well, two that I want to hit are definitely Pro Worlds and USDGC. But those are like, if those are qualifiable for me, those are the ones I really, really want to go to. And those are the ones I'm like focused on. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Well, I hope you get to those. That would be, that would be great for you and awesome to see you go compete. It would be amazing. It would be an awesome opportunity, and I feel like it would definitely solidify my disc golfer experience as a pro. Oh, yeah, definitely. 
Um, what right now is your like go to driver, both on a open style course and what would you go with on a wooded style course? Um, well, it, the destroyer is always one of the most trustable discs in the entire world, and you know everybody loves a destroyer in their bag. You gotta have one. But um, the T Bird, the T Bird's always been my go-to. It's always something I know what it's gonna do, and I know right where to put it. It's the most controlled disc in my disc golf bag. So. Yeah, that that is for sure. I have both of those, and I really they are very reliable and trustworthy. As long as you can keep them in there and not lose them, I'm sure. You lose a lot less than I do, but <laughs> <laughs> you'd be surprised how much we play in practice. This just come and go. Some yeah, people just forget them out in the field. Yeah, that is true. Um, kind of a, a future question: Where do you see the sport itself in about five to ten years? I see us getting some really, really big sponsors like Macbeth picking up the Adidas sponsor the other day, like. They're already putting that into the Gentleman's Club Classic on one of the courses since Adidas sponsored one. I keep seeing us getting more and more progressing into bigger name sponsors like Nike or Gatorade or something like that. You know, I feel like we're definitely going to be getting up in recognition and maybe even getting our own section on ESPN. You know, yeah. We've been getting so many spots on ESPN with uh, top 10s or Sports Center top 10s. And I think it's really great with the publicity and we're finally getting somewhere. Like, yeah, progress. definitely. I think it would be awesome if like uh, a sports drink company came in. We have like the shoe and kind of clothing. Now, I mean, if another clothing wants to come in and compete like Nike, that would be awesome because it almost become a bidding war for the sport. And that's such a great thing about Adidas coming in with Macbeth <clears throat> showing us like there is somebody's watching us out there like we're being looked upon too. Oh yeah, definitely. And that, and that's what we want. We want it to be seen and recognized as a real sport so we can continue to show people what it's like and show that there is competitive nature behind it. And there always has been, I mean, all the way back to it, um, Climo and Barry Schultz, they were always the ones competing and they are always, there's always been the competitive edge behind it. So, um, I, uh, before we let you go here, we have a couple people asking questions. Well, we have one question uh, from somebody in the live chat. Uh, he wants to know if you've beaten your 2011 world record toss. And do you still um, hold the record? I have every single, I have all five records that I originally set still. So 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, I believe it was. Those were the years. So... I still have everyone. They're still up on the WFDF uh, page dot com, whatever it is. Oh uh, wow! But I have broken that record, and my new personal best is seven hundred and eighty-four feet right now. So wow, seven hundred and eighty-four feet. That's insane. Oh. That was with a one seventy-five star destroyer. That was a one seventy-five star destroyer. Oh, nice. Wow, that's crazy. Um. Wow, that's that blows my mind. I can't even. Nah, no way. I can throw that far. But um, yeah, I think with the eleven-year-old one, I think it was five hundred and one foot or something like that when I was that old, and I did it with a groove. Oh a my gosh, a, I remember throwing a groove. Oh, it's the most underrated weird. disc ever. It is a very underrated disc. I remember that those things are pretty good if you can get over that little sloop there in the. In the groove, like that little groove there, it's just weird, but it's nice. I I used to bag them, and you know I don't even know why I don't anymore. They're such a great disc. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, I guess I mean that kind of wraps up my questions and stuff. I was like, uh, thanks again for joining us and giving us some of your time. For sure, thank you for having me. It means a lot to me. Yeah. Um, is there any uh, sponsors you want to give a shout out to or anything like that? Um, Innova Champion Disc, Twisted Flyer, Millennium Disc Golf Bags, they make the most comfortable bags in the world. Obviously, Adidas Outdoor, they make the most amazing shoes, waterproof shoes, they're just really light and comfortable, and mostly my mom and dad for always supporting me and making sure that I'm always where I'm at and where I need to be. That's awesome. Well, uh, wish you nothing but the best of luck in the future, and uh, we hope we can do this again sometime soon, and you can give us an update on your year again and let us know how it's been going. All right, for sure. Whenever you guys need me, I'm always here. All right. Well, thanks a lot. You have a good one. All right. You too. All right. Bye.
Well, that was interesting. Yeah, that's, I mean, as you can see, just a young kid who, who, who knows his stuff and is working on just being a better player and just in general getting to those tournaments. And, and like you said, those previous um, victories that he has as an amateur are really going to help him out when he comes into pro. Oh, yeah, definitely. And he'll be able to, I mean, for sure, use that to help propel his career. And hopefully uh, he has a good long career that we can keep track of. And Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully yeah. he can, like you said, hopefully he'll come on the show a little later. Um, we can sort of get some updates on things that are going on. And, uh, again, thanks, Nick Duran, for uh, taking your time and letting us interview you and letting our listeners uh, in on something new. It'd be cool to um, actually get him on if he co does qualify for like Worlds or USDGC. Mm -hmm. Kind of get him on before right. we talk about his preparation or right. something like that. It'd yeah, be neat to that'd be, they, they, I is. mean, he seems like a really cool guy, so uh, yeah. I look forward to talking to him again. Did you get how far that toss was again? 784 feet, I believe. Yeah, 784. That's the furthest you think you've tossed. Like, on flat ground. I can't even. Is that what he's doing? Like that? four you assume he's 30, doing? maybe. On four, a bomb. 450 at most. On a bomb. Yeah. Like, off of luck and like perfect win. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, to wrap up, that was a great. That's We love having interviews. Uh, that was our first. We hope to have many more. Um, so to end the disc golf, um, lip, we're going to do lips disc of the week. Um, Ooh. Disc we do, or. Uh,